This is video 8.2.3. Uh, we're going to look at the zero product property today. And the goal of this video is to understand how to solve a quadratic using the zero product property. So we're solving equations. You've solved lots of equations in algebra. But now we need to use this thing called the zero product property when solving a quadratic. The zero product property, what is it? The zero property, product property states if a product of two numbers equals zero, then one of the numbers must be zero. Okay, so let's back up and think about what this says. If a product of two numbers equals zero. So that simply means that something times something equals zero. That's what we're saying. If a product equals zero, then one of the numbers must be zero. Well, that should make sense because when you multiply a number times some other number and you get the answer of zero, something has to be zero. Either this number has to be zero or maybe this number is zero. Somebody is going to be zero. Maybe they're both zero at the same time, but somebody has to be zero. So we're going to use this product because zero is your friend and it's going to be helpful for many situations. It's going to be extremely helpful with quadratics. So we're going to solve a quadratic using this property. So take a look at what this means for the long run. Here's an example. If a, b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Someone has to be zero. So that's what the zero product property helps us do. I don't know if a is zero or if b is zero, but somebody is zero if this equation is zero. Let's look at one more example. What if we have this product? Remember, this is a product, something times something. This product helps me conclude that either the first thing is zero, either that first quantity, x minus four is zero, or the next quantity is zero. Somebody has to be zero. So what this tells me is there's two answers for x. There's two ways to solve this equation. And one answer is, if I solve this equation, I would solve it by adding 4, adding 4. I can see that the answer would be 4. That would make the first thing 0. And it would make the second thing, well, if I plug in 4, I would get 7. But it doesn't really matter, because the first number would be 0, and it would solve the equation, meaning it would make the whole thing 0, like the original equation said. Now, the other solution to this equation is, if this guy was zero, this guy over here. So we're going to take a look at what makes this zero by solving this equation. So x plus 3 equals zero. Solve it by subtracting 3. One quick step. And we see that x should be negative 3. So there's two solutions. One when x is 4 and one when x is negative 3. Take a look at negative 3. If we plug it back in into our equation, negative 3 plus 3, negative 3 minus 4, it doesn't really matter what I get on this side. I'm going to get negative 7. What matters is that this sum over here would be 0. And that would make my solution work. My solutions to this equation would be 4 or negative 3. There are two ways to make this equation work. So quadratics. Sometimes there will be two solutions to make a quadratic work. And the way we're going to find them is through this zero product property. So here's an example of what you're going to be given. You're going to be given a quadratic written out in the sum form. So 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. And the question says solve for x. So my goal is to figure out what x could be plugged in here and here so that when I do the math, I get an answer that's equal to 0. Okay? We could guess and check forever. We could do a lot of that. But we want to know how to do this problem every time without fail. And one way to do this is called factoring, which you've been doing a lot in class. And if we factor it, then we can use the zero product property. I'll show you how that works in just a moment, but let's start with the factoring. Remember with factoring, you put your x squared term in one corner and your constant. So in this case, our constant is negative 15. So we're going to put that number in the other corner. Now we're going to figure out how to get the seven x's in these two corners. So remember, we draw out a diamond problem, 
And we know that those two corners have to add up to 7x's because that is the sum that I have here. Oh, sorry, my sum should go on the bottom, right? So 7x should go on the bottom. 7x down here. Now, what should these two numbers multiply to? That's the other half of my dime problem. Well, remember, the product should be equal to the product that you see on your generic rectangle. So the product should be negative 30x squared. So now we guess and check. We think about what numbers would multiply to negative 30x squared, but add to 7x. I know they both have an x in them, because they have to add to 7x's. And because one, the product is negative, one of them has to be negative. And let's see, so we think about the factors of 30. So 6 times 5, 3 times 10, oh I see it, 3 times 10. Because if the 3 was negative, negative 3 plus 10 would be 7. So it's going to be negative 3x and 10x. So now I'm ready to fill in the rest of my generic rectangle. And I can figure out what the outside will be. 2x, the only way to get 2x squared is to have a 2 times a 1x. But wait a second, the 2x shouldn't be down here because it impacts this. So I'm going to change that one to a 1x. And I'll put the 2x on the left. Because 2x times 5 would give me 10x. And then 1x times negative 3 would give me negative 3x. And then last but not least, I can check that 5 times negative 3 would in fact give me negative 15. So we're good. We have our product. So now we can take and we can rewrite my original sum up here as a product. So my original sum of 2x squared plus 7x minus 15 can be rewritten as a product of the base and the height that you see on your rectangle. So 2x minus 3 times 1x plus 5. So that's my product, equals 0. Now since I've written my problem as a product, I can now use the zero product property. So remember the zero product property says that if you have, um, if you have a product of two numbers and they equal zero, then somebody's zero. So either this guy equals zero or the other guy equals zero. So we're going to write that out and show that one of those two has to be zero. So we're going to say that either 2x minus 3 equals zero or the next one should be zero. Now I'm not quite done with my equation yet because I need to, I need to figure out what the solutions would be to those two separate equations. So I'm going to solve each of them separately and figure out what x would make them 0. So I'm going to add 3 for the first equation and I get 2x equals 3, divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 3 halves or 1.5 whatever you prefer. So that's the solution to the first factor of my polynomial, my quadratic. Now the next factor I'm just going to solve with one simple step, minus 5, I get x equals negative 5. So that's my other solution. So I have two solutions to my quadratic, 1.5 and negative 5. Now remember, you can always check your answers. So what I can do is I can take this answer of 5 and I can plug it in these two. Now, of course, I should plug in negative 5, not just 5. But if I plug it in, 2 times 5 squared, negative 5 squared, plus 7 times negative 5, minus 15, I should get 0. So I can just check my answer, 25 plus negative 35 minus 15, let's see, 50 plus negative 35 minus 15. And it looks like I do, in fact, get 0. And I could do the same thing with 1.5. I could plug it in for my x's. Check that the answer works. But these are the two solutions that you're going to give as a solutions to this question that says solve for x. The two solutions are 1.5 and negative 5.
Now let's try this one more time with a little bit of a twist. So there's one step that I didn't mention that we're going to have to look at. Um, and you'll see that in the next video. But let's take a look at this one. We're going to take the same steps into solving for x here. Remember, the first step was to write this as a factor equal to 0 so that I can use the zero product property. So I'm going to start by doing that and using my generic rectangle and my diamond problem. So remember, your x squared term and your constant go in the opposite corners. And then we're thinking about, okay, we need to add to negative 6 because that is in my problem up here. But it needs to have the same product as what I see here, positive 9x squared. 1 times 9x squared is 9x squared. So I guess I'm checking my head. Since the product is positive but the sum is negative, they both have to be negative, x's. And the different ways to multiply to 9 are 9 times 1. 3 times 3. So it looks like negative 3 and negative 3 will work because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 and of course negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So that helps me fill in my two corners, my two missing corners, negative 3x, negative 3x. And now I can begin to fill in the remaining sides. One thing that I noticed right away is 1. Since that's 1, these definitely both have to be 1. But they could both be negative ones, so I want to be, be cautious and, be, and wait just to make sure I've got the right answer. So let's see, 9x squared, I think I'm going to use 3 times 3, because then I can get my 3's in the top and bottom corners there. So 3x times 3x, and that means these both have to be negative 1. Huh, so the sides are the same. This is in fact a square. So it's 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. Sometimes you might see a math teacher or a textbook write 3x minus 1. When you multiply them together like that, they might in fact write it as 3x minus 1 squared equals 0. Because there's two terms are being multiplied by themselves. This whole thing is being multiplied by the same thing. So sometimes we write it in shorthand. But this is an interesting implication for our solution. So the only solution to this equation is when 3x minus 1 equals 0. So I'm only going to have to solve 1. So it looks like I'm going to add 1. And I get 3x equals 1. Doing one more step here. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. and I get x equals 1 squared. There's only one solution to my equation. So remember, I jumped to this step because I used the zero product property. And the zero product property means that since this product equals 0, then either this first thing is 0 or the second thing is 0. So I have to decide. Now, since they're the same, I don't have to do both of them. So the only equation I write is here, because if this product is 0, then 3x minus 1 must be 0. So the solution to your equation is x plus x is 1 third. So give these a shot on your own, and I just want you to remember a couple of things. These are your key steps. So remember two steps. Number one, factor completely. So you've talked a lot about factoring completely. That's going to really help you do these problems with less mistakes. And the second problem, the second part to solving quadratics is to use the zero product property. Somebody must be zero. So whenever you have a product equal to zero, then either the first part is zero or the second part is zero. Somebody must be zero. Okay? Somebody must be zero. So remember those key things when you're trying to solve these quadratics. That once you factor it, all you have to do is decide who is zero and what makes them zero. So do your best and definitely check your answers by plugging them back in and seeing if they work in your equation.